Wednesday, everybody. It's uh, Keegan here from Mindful Meds, and I've got a super, super exciting live that, uh, that I can't wait to share with you all. This is a conversation with a friend of mine. He, uh, I've known him since I was six years old. He's one of Mindful Meds' own. Uh, he works for us and has been a partner for, with us since 2021. Uh, former NHL hockey goalie whose career got cut short due to concussion illness. He's had a major battle with anxiety and depression, and at one point was on six different medicines for all those things, plus sleep, plus, plus pain management. And um, I gotta say, we're lucky to have Mike not only here on this conversation today, but just here with us on the planet. He went through an enormous amount. So if you're interested or if you're somebody struggling that, that is on some of these prescribed medicines and you wanna know about a real success story um, using mushrooms, this live is for you. Um, also, if you're somebody that is an athlete or knows an athlete or has suffered from concussion illness um, or a TBI, a traumatic brain injury, this is certainly a conversation that you're gonna to wanna to tune into. So let's see if I can get lucky and invite Mikey in. Hi everybody, thank you so much for joining. Um, this works half the time. All right, Mike, send in the invite. Hey, Mike, are you here? I don't, I don't see your name out there yet. Hopefully this works. Um, let me try again. Okay, I've got you invited. So let's give you a moment to trickle in as we do that. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for taking the time to join. This should be a great conversation. Um, I did send Mike a voice note just before we started and didn't hear back from him. So hopefully he joins us. Um, we'll just keep going. We'll just keep trying. So Mike, if you are there, can you... Give us a shout out in the comments. Hey Kaylee, thank you so much for joining. So it says Mike Berger is not available to join and this happens all the time. So just bear with me guys, this, we're gonna make this work. Mike, can you send me an invite and I can try to loop you in? This is a conversation I've been waiting for for literally a couple of years. So I cannot wait to get this off the ground. It's gonna be what I think is gonna be one of our most impactful lives we've ever done. So once we get through this, uh, we should be laughing. I'll just keep trying. I'm just sweating over here. <laughs> Come on, Mike. Dee Dee from Cali, what's up? We're just struggling to get Mike in here. Mike, I've invited you a ton of times. Hmm. Well, Lisa, are you listening? Can you give Mike a quick phone call for me, please? And just see what's up. It'll happen, for sure. We're gonna get this off the ground. I just don't wanna lose people because this is gonna be such a good live. Uh, Mike has been through a tremendous amount uh, of adversity. And I can tell you, you know, as we wait, one of like, probably the biggest lesson, the biggest takeaway that I've had on this project of um, just, you know, self-discovery and learning for myself was, you know, I used to think that everybody wanted to just hear the highlights of your life. Everybody just wanted to hear about your wins. And I used to kind of walk into these meetings and, you know, I guess be a different version of myself, just, you know, trying to tell people what I can do. And, and the truth is what I learned on this project is like, the way that we can really connect with one another is actually through something much different and, it, and it's through pain. And so, you know, cause we've all struggled, we've all gone through a tremendous amount in our lives. And I gotta tell you the adversity that Mike's been through and to recover from this concussion illness and get off these prescription meds, um, his journey is remarkable. And now to be a father of three and a tremendous hockey coach, um, and he actually coaches my nephew, um, privately coaches my nephew, just became a goalie in Cochrane. Um, I can't wait to get this off the ground. So, any word from Mike, Elisa? <clears throat> oh, it sounds like they're talking. Sounds like there might be some technical problems. 
Um, yeah. I'll try it again. I can hear them talking. Okay, as we wait, does anybody have any questions for me? Does anybody want to ask me anything about mindful meds, about mushrooms, about my journey? Just as we kill a couple minutes here, Mike shouldn't be far. Um, I hear him talking to Elisa. They're trying to scramble to get him in. This is one of his first lives. Um, I know he's been wanting to do more podcasts and, and share his story. Um, and so, yeah, we'll just bear with him as, as I've struggled many times trying to get in here. Mike, my man, good to see you. Let me see if, okay, so now you should see an invite. And I believe once you see the invite, just click it and you should be looped in. Shit, man. Can you send me an invite, Mike? What's that? Yes, accepts. Oh my gosh, why is this? Mike! <laughs> Before, so. Oh man, so I, I think I see what's going on. I think you've just got some shitty Wi Fi and it's starting to clear up a little bit. How you Sorry, doing? guys, I just had my headphones in and I'm. So let's just chat through this way. Can you, can you hear me, Mike? Hey. I'm here. Sorry about the delay, everyone. What's up? It's all good, brother. We've been waiting patiently. This is going to be a super exciting convo. I didn't. Did you hear? No, I just got in now because I was uh, trying to figure out how to do it. I was in my email, and yeah, anyways. It's all good, man. I should, I should have given you a little prep. We, we planned to chat before this. Okay. So let me set this up. So I grew up in Calgary in a, in a community called Montgomery. And Mike literally lived down the street from me. So I've known Mike since I was six years old. And I played baseball with his brother. Uh, Mike's mom and my mom were friends. And uh, we went to high school together. After high school, there was this kind of great big gap of time where we didn't connect for maybe, let's call it like 15 years. And in February of 2021, my dad passed away and I did this post kind of announcing the, the project with Mindful Meds on my Facebook. And next thing I know, I get a call from Mike and he goes, holy shit, man, mushrooms have completely changed my life. And I love what you're doing. Can we go for dinner? And uh, we met for dinner. And I, you know, Mike, I remember your story. It was incredibly compelling. The things that you've been through, the struggle that you've been through. And one of the things that I want to do in this conversation is maybe just take a, take a trip down, you know, your, your lifeline and talk about, you know, your life, your story of how you got to the NHL and how it, you know, it was this amazing start to your career. You had two shutouts in your first uh, four games, I believe. I think you won every game you played, and um, and then just like that, man, it seemed to be to be over, and the universe had other plans for you. Um, so, if you wouldn't mind, Mike, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell tell the audience, tell our friends in the community. Sure, I'd love to. Well, you know, like any kid had a dream. Right. You know, lots of kids dream to be an astronaut or a scientist. I had the dream to be an athlete, and. I found it was my only solace. It was the place where I felt I belonged because my whole childhood, I really never felt like I belonged to a group of friends. I had friends, but I never felt like I truly fit in. Um, the only place I felt like I fit in was the arena. When I had my mask on and I was playing hockey, I felt like I really belonged and I felt like I was making an impact in something. You know, the classroom, school, I'd always feel like it wasn't the place for me. Um, anxiety, you know, I had, I just figured out that I have visual dyslexia, visual dyslexia. So when I read something, my brain doesn't transfer what I read. So going through school, not understanding what the hell was wrong with me, 
it really was hard on my brain and teachers would ask me questions and instant anxiety would come in. I didn't know how to breathe. And now I look back and it, it was a lot to do with holding my breath. And, you know, the littlest things that we don't teach our children, you know, just the simplest thing on how to breathe is it's been life changing for me. Um, so through school, I think I developed a serious, severe addiction to cannabis at about 16 years old. Um, I think it was to block out my anxiety and my feelings of energy because I can, now that I recognize energy and transfer of energy, I really am conscious of how I felt when I was in school. And I think that's why the cannabis intake got so high because I was really trying to block out that transfer of energy between individuals and animals and plants and anything like that, where I'm just so sensitive to it. And now I can actually kind of block it out. So it's, uh, it's been an interesting process, but, um, like I said, with a six, I chased the dream for 25 years, and I got fortunate enough to be drafted by the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, I played 12 years professional, and it was it was a dream come true. I got to play in the NHL, and then you know you get to taste the the feelings of fame and glory, and you know next thing you know, your head's on the ice, you're bleeding, and you can't think straight for nearly 10 years. Um, so. Once retirement hit, it was, you know, what do you do? You know, somebody works their whole lives to be a doctor or a scientist or something like that. And usually it doesn't just get taken out from under you unless you have a severe brain injury or something where you can't perform. And that was the case for me. So you go from peak athlete to, you know, not being able to run up the stairs, not being able to ride in a car, um, severe rage, sadness. You know, I'd cry daily. Um, it was hard. Um, I thought of taking my life many times, um, still tears me up cause I haven't, you know, totally worked through the trauma. I'm trying to work on my shadow, do a little bit of shadow work these days, but it's been hard. You know, there's some days are harder than others, but I fought through, through it. I went to the doctors. I went to counselors. I spoke on the phone with many people and nothing seemed to help. The doctors just gave me prescriptions. I think there were six or seven to that ones that I was on from Ritalin to antidepressants to pain pills, nerve pain pills, gabapentin. I was taking 15, 16 pills a day. Like I stopped crying. I stopped having rage fits. I was still in a bit of pain, but I was never involved. Right. I was like, it was like trying to be an athlete and you're on the outside of the field looking in. You just can't, you're not involved. You're just in a cloud of hopelessness and, at some point I said enough's enough and I started researching and the more I seen things about mushrooms and what they did for me as a child like when I started eating mushrooms at about 17 16 years old and I think every time I did them they they switched something on in my brain that created greatness inside me that really drove me to be a better person connected to me my my inner spirit that really brought out the best in me it kicked me in the ass I guess you would say and uh, that was the biggest part for me. So bringing it back to where I was and the reset, I read about the reset for depression and what it does for the brain because I was in just such a hopeless state. I ordered some online, you know, just on a whim from a cannabis company that I, that I used and got these mushrooms. I think I did five grams in a lemon tech of penis envy. And it was like I was touched by God. I had a reconnection with my soul and a love for life and my family and an appreciation for just being here, for this experience we get to be a part of and the connection with people. It's, uh, they're beautiful medicine and, you know, I hope everybody gets to experience them because some of the experiences I've had on them are the most experience, the beautiful experiences I've ever witnessed in my life. And people that are scared of them, I don't think you should be because they're so magical. Like they just bring out the heart and soul in everyone and they just make you feel amazing. Yeah, man. And there's uh there's so much to that, Mike, and, and thank you for for diving into these places that that are difficult to chat about, man. But I can tell you there's gonna be somebody on the other side of this conversation that needs to hear this story today. And uh so thank you for being brave. Um, first thing that comes to mind is that Mike and I actually went to a mushroom retreat together last year. And um, the, the live that we did on Monday with Greg German, we went to one of his retreats on Bowen Island together. We drove out together. We drove back together. And 
I can tell you, I, I don't think I've ever seen a happier human being ever in my lifetime than watching you, um, you know, on your journey, man. It was, you know, you couldn't stop crying. It was so beautiful. It was amazing to witness. And, um, and yeah, so, so that is something that we shared together. I'm grateful to have that experience with you. Um, why don't we just maybe circle back a little bit? Let's, let's, let's start maybe kind of child, childhood years. You know, now having all this time to kind of do, do some mushrooms. And by the way, as far as I know, you haven't done another mushroom no, I, since we went. I haven't. On our that was the last time. Yeah. That was the last, last time we did it. Yeah. And so when we talk about doing these journeys, we're, we are talking about doing them um, in a very safe therapeutic setting and, and also doing them really when, when, when it's necessary, like when, when we're really feeling called to it. You know, I don't want people to get the impression that you're out there doing mushrooms every weekend because it's just not, that's just not the case for you. Um, but you mentioned something really interesting and something that I can relate to is you know, that addiction side of things is certainly something that we share in common. And mine was different, came at a different time in my life, but certainly can relate to being addicted to something. So when you've had like these psychedelic experiences and you've had a chance to go through tons of therapy, I know you have. And um, when looking back on that anxiety, can you put a finger on maybe how that's you know i think the anxiety on? really came from the brain injuries and surgeries because i you know i had back surgery multiple hip surgeries multiple hernia surgeries and i think performance anxiety started you know not wanting to get hurt not wanting to get injured again and then the brain not working properly kind of i think that was the major tweaking point was when i banged my brain for that one time that really messed me up really threw me sideways and just it was like my brain wasn't functioning properly but it was almost like it was telling me I needed to change things but I didn't understand that at that time right the world the universe was saying hey you're not on the right path right now and that's where I think the anxiety comes from and even today where I do still feel ang anxious sometimes it's probably because I hadn't journaled that day or I hadn't done my meditation or maybe I'm missing my yoga you know, there's little things that, you know, kind of hit the soul, but I think that's what cr the anxiety is. It's, it's our self and our soul telling us what we need to do, but we're not doing it, right? Because we can all tell everyone else what they can do, but if we're not doing it ourselves, yeah. that's when you feel anxious. That's when you feel stressed out because you know what you need to do, but you're not doing it. And that's why I think with the mushrooms, you know, shutting down that default mode network in our brain to help create new habits, create new new spaces for us to try new things. That's why I think they're amazing. Yeah. Yeah, well said, man. And so, we're, I don't want to jump around too much, but I want to get kind of the childhood stuff just kind of connected a little bit. So, here you are in high school, you're feeling disconnected to going to school. You, you later learned that you had some type of impediment that was obviously holding you back a little bit. Um, but I remember when we spoke, and by the way, one of the things that really stuck with me when we, when we went out for dinner that night in Calgary, at the end of that dinner, you said something you know, I'll never forget. And you said, Keith, this is the first time I have ever told my story like this to anybody. So you had bottled this up for so many years and to be honest with you, um, you know, you had said like you hadn't even shared parts of that story with your wife. So to be here today on an Instagram live that's going to be shared with thousands of people, um, man, that's just some amazing growth. So I'm really proud of you, Mike, that you're out here telling your story. Um, Always. But so you were showing up. To yeah, I, I had to. It was the only way I could function. It would slow me down. It would calm my brain. You know, um, I would wake up and have just a little puff. It wouldn't be anything really crazy substantial, but it was, it was what I believed could keep me calm because at some point when I was a teenager, it worked for me and it kept me calm. And I played some of the most amazing games of my life, not baked because I'd do it in the morning and then I'd have a good nap and then I'd play a hockey game. But it was, it was the only thing that shut down all the noise, you know, the noise that 
that's going on. It would just shut it down and I could focus on what I needed to focus on. Otherwise, I don't know if it was my connection that I didn't understand what it was and I still don't, right, to the divine and it, it just all the noise, all the thoughts. So the cannabis really just helped control that and kept me calm and in that safe space where I could feel flow because as a goalie you got to feel the flow you got to be in the zone and if you got voices running around in your head that are you know telling you you can't do something then it doesn't work so I found you know the cannabis really helped me with that wow man and uh yeah thank you cannabis to me has, has been very helpful to you I, you know for me it's to quiet down the brain a little bit I have ADHD I don't tend to use it during the day, but very helpful for me in the evenings, for sure. Um, so now you're going through high school, you've got this cannabis addiction, you've got this extreme anxiety. You, you it was, extreme it was anxiety prior to when I put the pads, pads on, on, but you know what? Like I'd have anxiety before. going to school. I'd have anxiety going to new situations, you know, going in the locker room. Like I said, the only time it would go away was when I put my helmet on. It was my safe place. It still is my safe place as a coach. When I'm on the ice, I'm, nothing else matters. It's just, it's my happy place, right? And then it was when I was a kid. It was just my escape. I didn't know what else to do. And I feel, really felt like I fulfilled a purpose when I was doing that because I was so good at it. And I was very passionate about it. So it was, it was an enjoyable experience. But the anxiety was all the time as a kid. I just didn't understand what it was. And I didn't talk to people. I didn't tell my parents how I felt or what I was feeling at school. I just bottled it all up, always. It was always just take it internal and put it away and don't share it. Don't share your feelings, especially as an athlete. You're not allowed. You can't show weakness. Nobody's going to take somebody to war that's got a weakness, right? They don't, yeah. they don't deal with that. Now it's changing a little bit, thankfully, for the athletes that are in the game now. But back then it was you know you show any weakness and you're going down you're going down a level you're going down another level and when you're wanting to move up and that's all you've dreamed of you bottle it up and you you take it with you everywhere wow. you go wow so in the locker room then at that age there was no conversations about mental health there was no conversations about anxiety addiction and uh it was you know full pot yeah. to, to even speak yeah. about it right like God, that is scary to me. Um, okay, man, amazing. So, so you get through high school, you get drafted when we're when you're in grade twelve. You went yeah, well, I was a year after I graduated, uh, so I was nineteen years happened. old when I got drafted, and then uh, I was supposed to go for a full ride scholarship to University of Wisconsin, and then uh, because I played some exhibition games as a young kid in the Western League, they end up saying I couldn't go. Uh, well, I couldn't play my first year, and that wasn't my goal because I wanted to play professional. So school was really just an afterthought, and that was kind of a stepping stone for my my pro debut. So hanging out, letting it happen, and you know, I fell down. But at the end of the day, the universe had a different plan and still does. So, you know, working a way to keep plugging at it. hundred percent, man. So let's go because I remember being in Lethbridge. I think no, that, that was, was in 2009 and 10. Was you were playing for the Sens? 2004? Yeah. 2009, 10. So that was afterwards. Okay, gotcha. And... Let's go now to, now you've got, so, so you've got your fourth game. You started four games in the NHL. Was, did something no, happen? it was actually did kind of towards, well, that, what happened was another goalie finish. got healthy. And because he was making five million that year, and I was only making three quarters of a million, they send me down because, you know, the general manager doesn't look good when you're playing over top of a guy that's supposed to be making that kind of money. Even though you're a better goalie than them, you, you still get, filter down doesn't look look good on the big dog if you know the seven hundred thousand dollar guy is playing better than the so i got sent back to the minors and then i hurt my hip and it was all downhill from there the next year first game of the year in the minors i hit my head on the ice and that's that's when my concussionist symptoms just kept going and going i got multiple concussion after another after another after another and never felt same again for about 10 years until i really took that heavy dose of mushrooms that I don't know if it fixed my brain or fixed my mindset. I'm not sure what it was, but I did them. I think I did a macro dose five times in 
two months heavy, but like every time it was the most beautiful, like I felt like I was a yeah. God. I felt like I was a giant when I was on them. I felt unstoppable. All the positive things that came into my mind about the world and about everything that's connected. It was just, Oh my goodness. If I could record my thoughts in those situations, it's, it's incredible. So hopefully in the future, I'll start doing that. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> well, I think people want to hear about this, man, because up until very recently, there has been no treatment available for TBIs and concussion illness. There's tactics that will help people mask the, you know, the pain and the rage and the dizziness like you spoke about. But quite honestly, there hasn't been any tools to actually physically repair the brain. And so talk about about what the doctors were saying to you a little bit when you were having this concussion illness what type of tactics were they using then and then I'd love well to they just said rest rest and with the mushrooms. hope it gets better um that was you know before they really started doing any heat treatment i you know reached out to the nhlpa and they give me a phone number for a counselor to talk to because now you're not in the system right they don't give you the treatment that you deserve and you're used to high class the best treatment you could ever experience and then all of a sudden you're not an athlete anymore and they don't have time for you um and it was hard because i didn't have insurance when the, the injury happened so you know lots of people will be like well you probably got lots of money but for some reason the one year i didn't get disability insurance is the one year i cracked my head on the ice and the one year that ended my career so you know what at the end of the day we'll find other ways to make it work and we always do right the universe has planned for us and we're well protected as long as we believe we are but yeah like i had a bad addiction that started to hockey too when i was with ottawa's farm team you know, sleeping pills and percocets and you know they gave out those things like candy um thank god canada has sleeping pills that have that taste that, that leaves that taste in your mouth I was, otherwise i would have been addicted to those things for 15 years when i came home i that was the only reason I stopped taking them. But I was, we were taking two, three a night to go to sleep, right? Till your vision would go double, triple, and then you'd just pass out. Wow. Guys on the bus would be taking all those, right? There were so many of us that developed oh, problems. Yeah. I didn't even know what pain pills were until I went and played pro hockey in the U.S. And all the college guys down there had a little bottle of nine different kinds of things. And they were like, what do you want? And I was like, what do you mean? What do I want? Right? Wow, man. Wow. And so, I mean, I can only imagine your career's coming to an end. Your body is, is starting to give out on you. Your brain yeah. is not the Yeah, I had, I had my boy, I had you Beckham. He was about two years old. So right. we went to Orlando and tried yeah, I mean, playing again, but I got a concussion first practice of the year. And then we just hung out in Orlando for, for eight months and did the Disney thing. And I, I had another hip surgery and we just kind of, enjoyed it because we knew it was our last year so good thing we were in florida for that one i guess that was in 2011 i believe when was that 2011. wow man so everything's wrapping up now but you're left with this concussion illness and is this the time that like you've got the rage and you can't swing a golf club and you can't drive in a car yeah, I got real dark because, you know, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't even crawl on the floor with my son to play with him, right? The pain was so bad. The nerve pain, like, they thought I had MS. They didn't know if I had fibromyalgia. They couldn't figure it out. It was uh, it was disheartening because you just I felt broken like I couldn't be fixed. And now I go back, and it was mostly my brain. My brain was what was causing the illness. My brain was causing the pain. My brain was causing everything. And now when I do feel like my stress rises, that's when my pain comes back a little bit. So if I can control my stress and control my anxiety, it seems to keep my, my pain under wraps. I still have pain. Don't question. I got pinched nerves in my back that will take a long time to fix, but it's way better. It's manageable. I'm not lying in bed 
eight hours a day trying to just breathe through the pain. It was so bad that I would just lie in bed in tears and breathe through the pain for six, eight hours. Then I'd get up and go to the rink and get on the bench and coach. And then I'd go back and it was just a cycle of pills, sleep, alcohol, and cannabis. And it was just a vicious cycle that never ended. And I never felt like I was involved in anything. I wasn't, I was like 10 years of my life that I don't even remember. Wow, man. I got to tell you like, that this all resonates so much with me, you know, my life at that time, it, it, like in that pocket of time was also really crumbling. And um, fuck, man, I was fully addicted to alcohol. I was so close to jumping off a building in New York City in 2008. And uh, so I can relate to that pain. But it's remarkable, the turnaround, and to see the turnaround. And I think, so at what point did you find the mushrooms then? So it's 2011. Let's try to get up to date to where we are today. So 2011, you come back from Orlando. Now you're coaching, but you're stuck in bed. Yeah, no, that's you're just that's when it, uh, well, when I first right? retired, I started, um, I was hanging out with my cousins and a few friends that were pipeliners, and we dabbled in some stuff we probably shouldn't have um for a little while and partied a little harder than i'd like to um but it was it was an interesting um aspect i think it was part of the plan for me to try these different things to understand what other people are going through with their struggles of recovery because i'd really like to get into that you know form of therapy is helping people recover from addictions because i've tried almost everything you could know and so I understand what they're feeling. I understand the feeling of needing it. I understand the feeling of, you know, getting away from it and trying to recover from things. And it just, it's hard. It's hard. And I think, you know, it's easier when somebody's experienced it themselves and it's easier to connect with them when, when they've de dealt with it as well. So it's, it's something that I'm really passionate about and I really would like to get into it in the future, but it's, uh, it's, a, it's a ways away. For sure, man. For sure. And so, walk us through what what, what healed you, Mike. Because, like, you know, you were in such a bad shape at that point. You were on all these prescription meds. When did all that? Uh, like, when when was it? It was uh, is kind of about two thousand and. Did it cut out? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. We lost uh, 2018, you. 2019 was when I ordered the mushrooms gotcha. and really started to change. Uh, my brother-in-law, he died um, of a fentanyl overdose and we were tight. We and him used to do mushrooms together all the time. It was funny because the day of the retreat we did was his birthday and I knew he was there with us. Um, but that's when I really started diving into the spiritual stuff. My mom taught me about the Wim Hof. Wim Hof like was amazing for me. That breath work was incredible. Uh, my mom also taught me about the tapping, um, EFT, emotional freedom technique. Where, and I had a breakthrough when I did that. That was I broke down and cried for three hours, and that was like the first step to like realizing that this can change. So it was so simple, but it was so miraculous that it would just open my eyes to all these other modalities, and I was like, whoa, whoa, what are we missing here? So that's when I was like, okay. I knew we'd need to avoid the doctors and I need to dive into me and then where can I fix this myself? And that's where the mushrooms came in. And that's where, you know, me and my brother-in-law used to do them and enjoy them. And that reset was always there, but I never thought of it as like a therapy as a healing device. And then once I read about it and I did them and changed my life. And that's when, you know, I ended up seeing your post about six, eight months later about the microdosing and I knew because it was the craziest thing when I was watching this movie and I don't remember what the movie was and I was just gone like there wasn't a roof in our house all I seen was stars it was the universe above me there was no roof I was in the house but when I paused this movie and all I was thinking about was being a spokesman for mushrooms and like being able to tell my story of true healing and what they've done for me. And when I paused it, when I was thinking about this or the divine was speaking to me, whatever it was, when I paused it, the guy on the TV was pointing his finger at me like, like this, like you, you need to do this. And that's where it all started to align. And 
just the synchronicities behind this has been incredible. Oh God, that's so cool, man. And, uh, and you're here, you found your way into working with the mushrooms. By the way, if anybody wants to communicate or chat with Mike about a story, Mike runs our live chat on our website all weekends. Every Friday, weekend, Saturday, Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, yeah. Sundays. Is it Friday, Saturday, Sunday or Saturdays and Sundays? Friday, Saturday, and Sundays. So if you want more about a story, if you want to hear about what Mike is taking from microdoses to help him with his anxiety, depression, um, he's there. And we're all here to, to help, you know, in any capacity that we can. Um, had something, I had some things written down, but I, I kind of like the flow of, of the convo. So I remember when we connected, man, like you were deep into, as you mentioned, the breath work. You were one of the first guys that I knew that was doing the cold plunges really early, uh, you know, three or four years ago. I know they're taking off like crazy now. Um, meditation. And where, where are you at with all those healing modalities today? Do you still find time? Always. To, the to do the all breath those, work is, it, it's know, a catalyst for me. Um, yeah. If I don't do it, it I'm, I'm a wreck. You know, the mushrooms help, but I need that breath. The breath quiets the mind. Um, so when I get to the hockey rink and I'm coaching, if I have an extra 15 or 20 minutes, I'll close my eyes and I'll connect. I got a heart mass sensor and I, I'll throw that on and I run that myself. I try and teach my goalies how to do the heart math as well because that brain heart connection is, it's incredible what it can do for your life. And that visual feedback, I think for children to see really teaches them how that feels and what it's like to be able to feel like that and have that connection. And I do it every day. Honestly, I'll wake up, I meditate. I try to do it twice, three times a day just to keep my mind clear. And I try to teach my students the same thing. You know, breath is power, breath is life, breath is spirit. I think, you know, I, there's so many adults that I talk to that don't know how to take a deep breath. Like they don't know to fill the diaphragm first. It's, it's incredible. And you can see them think about it and they're like, oh shit, I've been breathing wrong my entire life. You know, like what are we teaching in our schools? We're teaching about history, but is it real history? Can we, you know, maybe yeah. talk about what we're really here to do? And that's, you know, that's what I feel like I'm here for is to teach these, teach these kids how, how to be, be here and know that they're enough or more than enough, right? We're more than enough and we're here to be a part and be a part of the collective and we're all connected and we need to understand we're not individuals, right? We're all here to be together and walk each other home. Uh, beautifully said, man. I actually, I just started some new therapy here in Vernon with, uh, with a woman named Liz R Rizanson. And she, uh, in my second session, brought out the heart math and got me connected to the heart math. Do you want to maybe give people that are hearing this for the first time an explanation of what the heart math is and, and what it's actually monitoring because it's no for sure the heart math is amazing well what it does is it teaches you well when you react to something or when you respond to something we actually respond with our heart first so when our brain and our heart is in coherence we're going to respond to things better we're going to react in a better situation we'll be able to solve problems without any kind of issues so with the heart math it teaches the kids or people how to connect the brain and the heart just through breath. And it's the most simple exercise you can ever do because all you do is think about your heart. Think about something that brings joy or love or bliss to you. And you breathe through that area. And the instant feedback it gives you, well, with your, if you're in coherence, it goes green and it shows you a stage of where your heart is. And then you, it's cool because when I do it with my students, I'll be like, you suck. Whatever team they're on, I'll be like, your team sucks. And you can see it instantly go red. And then they have to find a way to get it back. So it's, it's, and, and they can get it back really quickly. So it's teaching them how to respond to stressful situations through breath. Instead of reacting to it, they can think about it and respond to it. I think the response is a, such a good way to put it instead of reaction. How do we react to things? I don't even like the word react, right? I think respond. How do we respond? Like even when we're playing goalie, I talk to my goalies now, like, 
We need to respond to the situation, not react. I feel like it's a smoother word. I feel like it's got a better energy to it. And that's why I think the heart mass is incredible. I want to buy 20 of these sensors. I want to start going to schools. And I want to teach the kids how to do it. Because I think the instant feedback for kids is what they need to see. Because technology and the connection with the heart math device is going to help change the way kids respond to stress. And if I can teach anything through my sport and through coaching, if I can teach them how to deal with stress, I don't, or with stress, I don't care about the way they stop a puck at the end of the day. But in 10 years, when they get in a stressful situation and they can think about brain, heart, you know, heart, breathe, okay, stress has gone down. Thanks, Coach Mike. I've done my job. Damn, man. I had no idea you were using heart math with, uh, with your students, your kids. That, to me, is spectacular. What other tools are you, are you bringing into your coaching that, uh, that might be a little different? Breath work. And, uh, I teach the kids, you know, how to set goals. Uh, we talk about mind movies, um, how to create your own movie in your mind. Um, but first, getting to that state of mind where you're in coherence, right? We need to be in an emotional state that's relaxing and then create that emotion that backs that visual of where we want to be, right? So wherever that goal is now, it's not a just seeing them make a save. It's, you know, connecting their breath. What do they smell? How does it feel, right? What does it look like? You know, everything that's part of that visualization that makes it real. So then when they get in the situation, it's like it's already happened, which is actually absolutely incredible. And the sensors called, if you type in heart math online, it should come up. Um, yeah, heart math. I'm not sure exactly what the, the company's called, but the device is called heart math. And it, it should come up if you guys type it in your link. Yeah. Yeah, no, I was, I was really intrigued by it, man. And I just had my first hard math session last Tuesday. And then yesterday when I went back for another session, she's all about like this exact conversation. So she's all about giving people the tools that they need in these stressful situations. And, and yeah, yesterday, man, I was doing the Wim Hof with her. It wasn't actually Wim. It was, it was another guy named Dirk here in Vernon. Um, but it was incredible, man. 31 minutes, it blew past and like, it felt like it was five minutes. It was that quick. She did it with me. But I gotta be honest, like I was in that boat of people that weren't taking a proper breath. I had done some Wim Hof before many times, but she was actually teaching me about taking the full breaths and uh, the pressure points that you have on your spine and, and all the way up through your neck. And, uh, for the first time ever, man, I, I, I left that session and I was like on cloud nine. It was, it was cool. It was the first time that I'd ever experienced breath work that way. So that's fucking awesome, man. How, you know, if, if somebody wants to do some coaching with you, are you open to that? Like, what is, what is your schedule like these days in Calgary? I know you're crazy busy. But if, if anybody's listening, that yeah, they could reach to, out to me. I, I have a website you, balanced with 3D. I can type it in the link here. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll put it into. So that's it right there. Just balance.ca. So that's my coaching well. company where I, you know, I teach students and players how to play the game. But I think it's more about life and how we interact. Um, I'm a coach, but. I feel like I become more part of the family than just being a coach. And I try to wear my heart on my sleeve. I put emotion into everything I do, maybe a little bit too much, <laughs> but I think that's why we're here is to change lives and impact kids in a way that, you know, I never really had that. I had some great coaches, but never impacted me emotionally that, you know, changed my life, changed my thought process. You know, I think that's the part of being a coach is, helping people change their thought process on what life actually is, you know, making them see things for a different, from a different side, you know, just look at things from a, a different perspective. I think it's important to open our minds to possibilities that they make sound cr crazy because everything that I'm dealing with now, 10 years ago, I would have been like, that's crazy. What are you talking about? Right. And, that's to me now it's all life is spirituality yeah. love freedom 
you know, being in nature. That's why I went for a walk today. I'm down by the river. It's a beautiful day. It's nice not for me to sit outside. I'm still wearing a toque, but I need the connection. I got my boots off right now trying to get grounded to the earth because it's, it's needed. And <laughs> without that grounding, I feel like my root chakra is broken half the time. So taking my shoes off, even if it's cold out, it's okay. Man, I, I love it. I, I love how you turned all that pain, all the stuff that you've walked through, man, all that adversity, you spun it on its head. And now you're repurposing it and sharing this gift with all of us, man. I'm just so proud of you. Um, as I mentioned, my nephew's been doing some work. Oh, he's been awesome. He's much. quite the little athlete uh, and he's so I competitive. That's where he's got, if I can teach him to breathe a little bit, to just to let things go, right? Water off a duck's back. Yeah. We got to have a little selective amnesia as a goalie. So, but a very good little glove on him and his improvement in six months is absolutely incredible. So pretty neat. Actually, I just booked Dyson Vernon for the first week of August. I'm going to do a camp out there. Yeah. Oh, right on. Okay. All right, man. And I'm actually going to be back in Calgary uh, cool. February 11th to the 14th. So maybe we get a chance to connect in person. I'd love that if you could. Um, listen, man, we've got some feedback coming through. And if anybody has any questions or wants to ask Mike something, please feel free to drop it in the question box. Um, man, so many people just saying thank you. Thank you for taking the time. Um, it just... Everybody is just thrilled about this, Mike, it seems. Um, yeah, of course, you know, SSRIs are just a Band-Aid. Couldn't agree more. Um, yeah, lots of nice little comments here, man. No direct questions that I can see here. Just so many people that can relate to your story. Um, man, I, I really like where this new wave of coaching is going. I, you know, when I look back, I was never a pro athlete, but I played football and baseball and I was very competitive. Mr. And, Dom. Uh, our high school. Oh yeah. He caught me coach. skipping dance a him? few times. Dom Dom? That wasn't good. I mean, <laughs> he probably tore your head off. Yeah. I mean, dude, the guy, I just remember nonstop, like he just yelled at you nonstop. Like there was no compassion. There was no... Like, he, the way that he coached, and he got the job done, um, was just by tearing you apart and, and ripping you to shreds if you screwed up. And I just love this new way of thinking, man, and, and, and connecting with these kids and using these tools. Um, I, I highly recommend for everybody that is interested in new healing modalities or is that, that is possibly working with a therapist today to find somebody that is, is doing this heart math stuff. Because even after one session, Man, I found myself over this past week getting into the hard math rhythm, using the tactics, using the breath work, thinking about, you know, the same things that you said, something joyful, you know, a moment of love. And, you know, within minutes, I'm changing my perspective in my brain. Whereas, you know, my tendency is once I get into that red zone, and, and anybody that looks into this will know, it's kind of like an unhealthy place for your nervous system to be. That is where, if I'm going to use or I'm going to reach for a substance, it's because I'm hanging out in that red zone for too long. So these, these tools to get me out of there um, are highly, highly effective. Looks like we do have a question. Let's see how it works. I haven't. Never even heard of it, actually. Have you done brain spotting at all, Mike? I'll have to look it up. I haven't either. That's something we'll have to, we'll have to look into. Maybe you can send us some info on that, can I? Um, listen, brother, I have somebody upstairs doing some work literally right above me. So I hope the audio hasn't been showing that, but I'm having a difficulty concentrating with the noise upstairs. Um, it, you know, do you have anything that you want to leave the audience? Any, any wisdom, Mike, that you want to leave us off with? Um, or any way yeah, to you know, conversation, just, brother? I, I I'm very thankful to be part of this project. Um, I've had many friends reach out over the past few years thanking me for telling them about what this these mushrooms do and how they've saved their lives and they've changed their lives 
I had a few friends that reach out saying they weren't working and I said, stick with it. They stuck with it. And then they thanked me afterwards. Cause sometimes it takes a month. Sometimes it takes a little more than a month for these medicines to start working. And they're not a band aid that's just going to fix things like this, right? They're a tool to help you change your life. They're a tool to help you change habits. They're a tool that are going to help change your way of thinking. And I think, you know, the microdosing is great. It's a great way to do it, especially if you got a little bit of fear or if you're sensitive to certain things. But I think everybody's going to have to experience a macro dose. Um, at some point, you need to. And if you're afraid, hopefully in the future, we'll be able to help you along those lines and get you through it the right way. It's something I'm passionate about, something I would like to get into eventually is helping run these sorts of retreats because I have experienced macro doses so many times. The good, the bad, the scary, the happy, the love, everything that's involved with them, I've experienced every experience you could ever think about on mushrooms. So I think I could help people through no matter how hard their journey was because sometimes the journey is hard, but it's hard for a reason because we need to purge some of the shit that we've been bottling up for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. And that's what I thought well, I was really impressed with the, the retreat we went to where there was some yeah. 60, 70 year old women there that were, had zero fear that were there with their heart on their sleeves and they were just ready to experience something new. And How cool is that? The, you could see them, you know, they were breaking down. They went through a lot of hard stuff, but afterwards I feel like you feel like you're a bit free. So don't be afraid. Please reach out. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, wherever you want. If you want to talk about macro dosing, you want to talk about micro dosing, maybe you know someone with brain injuries. I'm here to help. That's my goal is to just be behind people and help you take the right steps forward because I was lost. I was broken. I didn't think I was going to be fixable. I'm still a little bit broken. I'm not going to lie. It's a long process of growth. It's going to take many years. I'll be growing until the day I die, but you know, three years ago, I didn't want to live to 50. Now I want to live over 100. I want to see how long I can push this little body of mine and see what I can do with it. So changing modalities and changing the way I eat and, you know, trying to stay happy and enjoy this life while we're here. And, you know, we're blessed to be using these bodies. We need to just use them the right way. I couldn't agree more, man. And, and honestly, we, we're blessed to have this conversation, and uh, we're so grateful to have you on our team, Mike. And I'm so proud of you and all the growth that you're thank doing. You. you inspire me all the time, brother. Um, so thank you. And and I agree. I mean, microdosing. Um, you know, maybe start with microdosing. I think most people that start with microdosing find their way to a to a macrodosing journey eventually. It's a great gateway to to the bigger stuff. Um, both have tremendous value when you do them the right way. Um, oh, Kyla, thanks, Kyla. Says, Love you, Mike. Glad you came into my family's life. Um, I feel like you made an impact on so many people's lives, Mike, so many kids. Um, and I'm just incredibly proud of you, and I can't wait to follow your journey um, with coaching and the heart math. And I can definitely see you going into schools, teaching children how to breathe, and, uh, and being a mentor at that level, too changing the way coaching is being done, the way mental health is being looked at in sport, and also changing the way that, um, you know, providing a safe environment for children to share their, their feelings. I mean, that didn't exist for us, right? It just wasn't a thing. And so Thanks. you paving the way that way, man. And if it I, wasn't for my wife, so I probably so wouldn't have been here. You know, um, she kept me here. She kept me too. on the up and up, and she was my, uh, she's my rock, keep me here. Yeah. And she's a beautiful human being. I know her and she's amazing. And I agree. It's, uh, we both have amazing partners in our life. Um, and by the way, just speaking on, on that side of things, I'm actually bringing Elisa on uh, a live next Friday. And it's the first time that her and I have ever shared our story, our 11 year relationship that we've had. Um, and some of the things that we've had to walk through, some of the pain that I put her through with my addiction, and, uh, and the fact that we're still here together doing this life together and actually getting married this year. Um, so I think it's going to be a compelling story. And, uh, and I hope you tune in for that one, Mike. And maybe one day we'll get Melissa on one of these things as well to share 
about how she she kept it all glued together. Um, it's amazing, buddy. But I think what we'll do is we'll sign off for now. Have an amazing Wednesday afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. And um, again, if you want to connect with Mike, you can connect with him directly on Instagram or Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays. He runs our live chat, so you can come and chat with him directly, talk about what's worked for him, uh, you know, to help get him off prescription medications, pain management, sleep pills, you name it. You've gone through it all, brother. And uh, we're so grateful to have you on the team. So I'll open it up just for one last moment. If anybody wants to share anything with Mike or ask us anything, um, now's the time. And if not, feel free to just drop it in the comments. We're going to get back to absolutely everybody on this. Um, so big love to you, Mike. Thank you to the entire community. Thank you, guys. Thanks, and, uh, Keeks. You guys have a wonderful day. Thanks for taking the time. Cheers.